Hello everybody, I am Dr. S. Supriya, working as an associate professor in the Department of Chemistry, Satibama Institute of Science and Technology. Now I am going to explain to you one of the important experiments that is the determination of pKa value of glycine. You all know glycine is an amino acid consisting of amino group and a carboxylic acid group. Glycine molecule consisting of amino group and a carboxylic acid group. The amino acid glycine which is the simplest amino acid exists in three forms in aqueous solutions. One is the glycinium cation where the amino group has become has gained a positive charge. You have the neutral amino acid which is called as the zwitter ion where the amino group is positively charged and you have COO minus which is the negative charge. So it is the dipolar ion and then you have the third form where the amino group is existing as such as NH2 whereas the carboxylic acid group has undergone deprotonation. So the three forms exist in equilibrium with each other in aqueous solution depending upon the pH of the solution. We are going to find out the dissociation constant Ka1 and Ka2 for the glycine solution using pH titration method. So in this experiment we are going to follow how the pH is going to vary with the addition of hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide solution. The Ka value, the first Ka value for glycine is based on the existence of the glycinium cation and the zwitter ion existing in equilibrium with each other you have the dissociation constant Ka1. If the zwitter ion is existing in equilibrium with the glycinate anion, you have the second dissociation constant which is Ka2. So you can write the equations for Ka1 and Ka2 depending upon the equilibrium states as this. For the dissociation constant Ka1, you have the zwitter ion in equilibrium with glycinium cation. So the glycinium cation you have as the reactant which is coming at the denominator. And you have on top, you have the zwitter ion along with the proton. So this is the dissociation constant for the equilibrium existing between the zwitter ion and the glycinium cation. When you come to the next part, the equilibrium existing between the zwitter ion and the glycinate anion, you have the second dissociation constant which is represented by Ka2 where you have the glycinate anion here along with the H plus and you have the zwitter ion at the denominator. So depend, depending upon the equilibrium existing between the three forms, you can find out what is Ka1 and what is Ka2 by following the pH change of the solution when you titrate the glycine solution with the HCl and NaOH solutions. So that is going to be the experiment and we are going to find out at what pH you are going to get the dissociation constants. So you are going to get pKa with the dissociation constants Ka1 and Ka2. So that is the aim of the experiment. So this experiment by following the pH titration method we are going to get the pKa values for glycine. So from by plotting the graph we will be getting how many pKa values exist for glycine molecule. How the protons are undergoing dissociation in different pH conditions. So you need all these chemicals and the instruments. I will demonstrate the experiment of determination of pKa value of glycine 
by following pH change of the solution. Now I am going to explain to you how pK value of glycine can be estimated by following pH change of the solutions. For that you will have to pipette out 10 ml of 0.1 n glycine into a beaker and you have to add 10 ml of distilled water place the pH electrode into the solution fill the burette after uh, cleaning and after uh, rinsing with the respective solution that is we are going to fill the burette first with 0.1 n HCl solution the first titration is HCl solution from the burette has to be added to the 100 ml beaker by placing the pH electrode dipped in the solution. The solution has to be stirred with the help of a glass rod. The HCl solution from the burette is added as 1 ml aliquots each time. The titration is carried out by adding 1 ml of HCl solution from the burette each time and by stirring the solution so that the electrode will detect the pH of the solution and it will be displayed as a digital reading in the pH meter. So add 1 ml of HCl 0.1 n HCl into the glycine solution. When you add HCl solution into the glycine the equilibrium will shift to your left. You will be getting glycinium cation where the amino group undergo protonation. So it gets protonated and the equilibrium shift to the left. Continue addition of HCl till 30 ml volume and every time after the addition of 1 ml of HCl the pH has to be noted from the pH meter. The second titration is you have to fill the burette with sodium hydroxide solution the concentration of sodium hydroxide is 0.1 n as that of the first experiment we have to pipette out 10 ml of glycine solution into the beaker and place the pH electrode in the solution to the glycine solution 10 ml of distilled water has to be added so that the electrode dip properly into the solution the burette has to be filled with 0.1 n NaOH solution so the titration now is between glycine solution and with sodium hydroxide taken in the burette. From the burette the sodium hydroxide solution has to be added in 1 ml aliquots to the glycine solution and after each addition the solution has to be stirred with a glass rod and note down the pH displayed in the pH meter. The digital reading display in the meter has to be noted down for the addition of 30 ml volume of sodium hydroxide and in the form of a tabular column you will have to present the readings. You get two tabular columns. The first tabular column has the readings where we have carried out the titration with glycine against HCl. The second tabular column has the readings obtained for the titration of glycine against sodium hydroxide. The readings that are entered in the tabular column has to be used for plotting the graph. So after collecting all the readings for the first and the second titration, you are going to enter the readings in the table. The first table you have volume of HCl, you are adding 1 ml, then again another ml. So in the aliquots of 1 ml each time you have the first column as the volume of hydrochloric acid. The pH you will note down from the pH meter for each addition of HCl. So the pH if you observe the readings goes on decreasing as you increase the volume of HCl which is to be added from the burette. So when you compare the equilibrium you can observe the pH the equilibrium shift towards the left in order to produce glycinium cation in more concentration. 
Coming to the second iteration for which you have plotted this table, you have volume of sodium hydroxide as 1 ml, 2 ml, 3 ml. So in the form of 1 ml aliquots, you are going to add sodium hydroxide into the glycine solution. Each time you are noting down the pH change of the solution. So you observe the increase in the pH value as you add sodium hydroxide from the burette. Collect the readings and you are going to make a plot. When you plot a graph taking pH on the y axis and volume of HCl and volume of sodium hydroxide on the x axis, you will get a plot of this type with the readings you have tabulated in the tabular column. So when you see this portion where there is increase in the volume of HCl towards the left and there is increase in the volume of sodium hydroxide towards the right. So this portion from 0 to this part will be the effect of addition of HCl to glycine solution and from this portion from 0 to this part will be the effect of addition of sodium hydroxide to the glycine solution. So from this plot you can observe as the volume of HCl is increased there is decrease in the pH value of the glycine solution and as the volume of sodium hydroxide is increased there is increase in the pH of the solution. So that is how you are getting this plot and the midpoint of this graph will give you the isoelectric point of glycine which means the glycine exists as a dipolar ion which is nothing but your Zwitter ion. So from this plot we can observe the existence of three different forms of glycine in equilibrium and depending upon the pH of the solution the equilibrium shift to either towards the glycinium cation or towards the glycinate anion and at equilibrium or at neutral pH the Zwitter ion form of glycine exist. From the graph and from the experiment we are getting two pKa values for glycine. So there are two dissociation constant observed for glycine which is the simplest amino acid. I hope all of you now are clear about the three different forms of glycine existing in equilibrium condition and how the equilibrium shift towards glycinate anion or towards glycinium cation depending upon the pH of the solution. So you have two pKa values for glycine approximately around 9.6 and other one around 2.8. Thank you.